Hey everyone, Lee here. So I know it's been a few weeks since my last video, but I have a special topic for today. Today's subject, we're gonna talk about politics. So the important thing to know with politics is, I think someone's at my door. One second. Huh, that was weird. I got this letter. Let's see what it says. It's from uh, the government. Cease and desist. 20 years in prison if you don't. Mm. I guess we're not talking about politics today. Luckily, I have a backup topic. Why is this in Russian? So as I mentioned earlier, it's been a few weeks since I did my last video. Now, part of the reason that is I've been kind of busy. Work, flying the drone. But really, a lot of my free time I actually have been spending binge watching uh, several TV shows that I've put off for quite some time. More specifically, I've been watching The Expanse and The Man in the High Castle. In fact, the past couple weeks since I've just been watching them nonstop. I think I might have had a problem there. <gasps> winning the war. But we didn't win the war. So a lot of times when I really get into a TV show or a movie, I like to look up different things about it and kind of find out more information about the show and, you know, different actors and also just, you know, what inspired the creation of these things. So what I found out is that both of these shows are actually based on books, with The Expanse being based on a series of books and The Man in the High Castle being based on a single book by Philip K. Dick, who also wrote the original story that inspired Blade Runner. So this got me thinking, what other books would make great television? There's already some great examples out there of books that became really great TV or miniseries. Most notably is Game of Thrones right now. Although the last few seasons have actually veered away from the books quite a bit, the story has remained fairly solid. The Band of Brothers miniseries was also another really great adaptation of a book into a miniseries. So here's my take on five books that would make amazing TV series or miniseries. So in no particular order, here we go. Number five, Citizen of the Galaxy by Robert Heinlein. Citizen of the Galaxy is one of Robert Heinlein's few young adult novels that he wrote back in the 50s. The story takes place in the distant future where humanity is spread amongst the stars. We've encountered a few aliens. There's been a few planets that have broken away from the main Terran democracy, I guess. And it centers around our protagonist, Thorby, who is a young man that's kind of originally sold into slavery and then he gets freed. And kind of just his adventures as he travels across the, the galaxy. He's always kind of an outsider looking in to the different cultures that he eventually becomes part of. Now, this book is actually fairly short, so if it was going to be adapted for television, I believe it would do best as like a mini-series with each episode focused on a different location that he's at, starting with his early childhood on the planet Jubal and then working it way up through the free traders and eventually when he reaches Earth in the end and discovers his family, that could be the, the ending of the series. Realistically, this could actually be adapted into a movie Obviously, there'd be parts that need to be, you know, shortened or cut out, but you could easily do that. Number four, The King and Maxwell series of novels by David Baldacci. So The King and Maxwell novels are a series of books that are based on the protagonists, King and Maxwell, who are former Secret Service agents that basically go around and solve crimes, mostly like high profile murders or just kind of like big conspiracy kind of cover-ups. Realistically, I could actually see this being adapted into a TV show very similar to like Criminal Minds or Bones or any of those kind of like crime dramas. Realistically, each book in the series could be adapted as an entire season with like an overarching, you know, villain that they're trying to find. It's usually like a series of crimes that this, you know, single villain commits. So each episode could be kind of like focusing on, you know, trying to uncover clues and unravel the mystery that is going on. The only bad thing about this show, were it to be adapted, is that it would be very difficult to distinguish itself amongst the other crime dramas out there. Just off the top of my head, you have shows like Law & Order, Law & Order to You, Criminal Intent, CSI, Bones, Criminal Minds, 
whatever. There's just so many crime shows out there that really could be lost amongst, you know, the, the rabble of other shows out there. Number three, Starship Troopers by Robert Heinlein. Again. Okay, so I know that Starship Troopers has been adapted in a 1997 movie. In fact, I'm pretty sure I've referenced it a few times and talked about it in one of my previous videos when I talked about movies that should re be remade. Number three, Starship Troopers. However, I'm talking about remaking it as a TV series. And yes, I understand that there was a CGI cartoon that was made about it that was kind of closer to the book. I don't think this could get much worse. However, I think it could be remade as a live action miniseries similar to Band of Brothers. I think part of the problem with adapting it though would be trying to stay faithful to the novel. There's large parts of the novel where the author just kind of rants. And with the views that the author is presenting out there, although interesting, I can see how that would turn off a lot of potential viewers, especially the concepts of you know extreme nationalism and putting your life above the, the lives of others. The idea that only citizens can vote and the only way to become a citizen is through some kind of dangerous public service. Not to get too political, but I know that the book has been accused of fascism in the past, particularly by Paul Verhoeven, who did the 1997 live action movie. Granted, if I remember correctly, he admitted to only reading the first chapter, so it's kind of hard to form an opinion when you really haven't read the book. Moving on. Number two, The Forever War by Joe Haldeman. The Forever War is a novel that is pretty much the antithesis of Starship Troopers. Joe Haldeman wrote the book after his experiences in Vietnam and how the war seemed to never end. And even when soldiers came back from that war back to the States, how everything had changed. You know, culture during the 60s and 70s was rapidly changing and different ideas were happening. And how a lot of the soldiers, they left and came back to a completely different culture. Now this book is definitely a sci-fi. It takes place in the not too distant future. We discover aliens. We create a reason to fight them. Welcome to Earth. And because of time dilation, every time the soldiers go out and they, you know, come back, basically decades have gone by. And by the end of the book, our main character Mandela has been gone so long and fought in so many battles and everything that really by the time he comes home, society is 100% different. He's a complete stranger out of water. He doesn't really speak the language. Now, similar to Citizen of the Galaxy, this book is actually fairly short and realistically could be adapted into a movie. However, I think if he did like a small, maybe like five to 10 part miniseries, it would work out pretty well with each episode covering one of Mandela's battles and you know, each time he returns home and how society has changed and become different. Again, not to get into too much politics, but I think you can make this extremely relevant to, you know, today's world. Whereas in, in the book, a lot of the veterans and everything of that, that were training the soldiers were from Vietnam. If you remade the show for today, you could potentially have it be veterans of the war in Afghanistan or in Iraq. And I can really see this hitting home at, you know, most people, especially if done well about the, you know, the idea that these soldiers, you know, deploy and they fight wars and they come back and, you know, it's, they're going out dozens of times and each time, you know, they're missing out on huge chunks of their lives. And also a unique aspect of this book and potentially if it was made into a show is that you could have a more hard science feel to it, similar to The Expanse. And number one, The Foundation Trilogy by Isaac Asanoff. So if you aren't aware, Eisenhoff is one of the founders of modern sci-fi with The Foundation Trilogy literally being one of the foundation novels of the sci-fi genre. The entire series can be the fall of the space Roman Empire and the buildup of the new empire that's you know gonna replace it. Now, while there are, I think like four or five books, realistically, if I was going to adapt this to you know television, I would only do the first three that uh, Eisenhoff wrote. I remember reading in the foreword for the original book that Eisenhoff basically, he wrote the original three with you know heart and everything and actually was paying attention to his characters. And then after that, I believe it was some ghostwriters and he might've written another one, but realistically his heart was, wasn't really in it. And he was just kind of writing it because his publisher made him. Now the first three novels take place over about 300 years. There's different time periods. Uh, each novel has about, I think like two different time periods. It's usually like one generation and then it skips ahead to like the next generation. Now, if I was going to adapt this into TV or a miniseries, you could potentially have each narrative or each point of view be a season. The novels aren't particularly long, but I mean, there's a lot of detail that goes into each, you know, point of view and what the different characters are doing. The only downside with that is that every season you'd probably have to change most of the actors. So, if, you know, if you end up liking somebody that's there, it becomes kind of difficult, you know, if they're not there the next season. Also in adapting this, I would love to see the style and the costumes kind of look like like a 
the old 1930s Flash Gordon. I mean, it's kind of quaint, but at the same time, the way that the novels were written back in the 40s and 50s, there's a lot of references to atomics and, and how some of the more fallen areas of the galaxy are going back to like oil and coal, but they still have spaceships and like ray guns and things like that. And I think if done well, it would look really amazing and be pretty cool. So that's my list of books that I think should be adapted to television or as a miniseries. What do you think? What favorite book of yours do you think could be put on the silver screen? Leave a comment below or you can send me a message on social media. Anyway, that's all I got for today. You all. Stay amazing.